good day dear students in this video we are going to talk about the long term and the intermediate term regulation of blood pressure long term means over days to weeks to months and intermediate term means over minutes i am dr swapnil parlekar so long term regulation of blood pressure that is o pressure regulation over days to weeks to months these bean shaped organs that is the kidneys are the dominant organs in the long term regulation of blood pressure please remember that long term regulation of blood pressure is done by the kidneys over days to weeks to months we have studied that the baroreceptors play an important role in the short term regulation of blood pressure over seconds over minutes there are intermediate term mechanisms but over days to weeks to months the long term regulation of blood pressure is done by the kidneys if the blood volume increases and the vascular volume is not changed means the capacity of blood to accommodate blood does not change then blood pressure naturally increases that is if blood volume increases but the capacity of the body to accommodate blood does not change and blood pressure naturally increases this causes the kidneys to increase the excretion of salt and water so there are two mechanisms by which the kidney operates these are called pressure natriuresis and pressure diuresis now what is pressure natriuresis and what is pressure diuresis pressure natriuresis is the abilities of the kidneys to increase the excretion of salt when its level in the body increases whenever the level of salt in the body increases the kidneys increase the excretion of salt in the body and that is called pressure natriuresis and pressure diuresis is the ability of the kidneys to excrete more water when the body has more water so please remember these two terms pressure natriuresis and pressure diuresis by which the kidney regulates long term blood pressure now what happens if blood pressure has increased chronically over a long period and what happens is that the there is decreased activity of the sympathetic nervous system please remember the sympathetic nervous system stimulates the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and decreased activity of angiotensin to an aldosterone which uh, promote retention of salt and water that is anti natriuresis means by promoting retention of salt and water they prevent their excretion which is anti natriuresis so if there is decreased activity of angiotensin to an aldosterone there will be increased excretion of salt and water by the kidneys that is pressure natriuresis and diuresis now i'll repeat this if there is a chronic increase in blood pressure there is decreased activity of the sympathetic nervous system hence decreased formation of angiotensin 2 and decreased aldosterone why there is decreased formation of angiotensin 2 because the renin angiotensin aldosterone system is not stimulated because there is decreased formation of angiotensin 2 there is decrease in the level of aldosterone which increases the excretion of salt and water by the kidneys so there is pressure natriuresis and diuresis so salt and water is excreted and blood pressure returns to normal simple isn't it so if there is a chronic decrease in blood pressure a positive effect increase activity of the sympathetic nervous system increase angiotensin 2 and aldosterone and decrease excretion of salt and water by the kidneys so more salt and water is retained and the blood pressure then increases now salt alone has a role what is this role role of salt in the regulation of blood pressure by the kidneys and salt that is nacl increases it regulates one very important parameter which is it you know you have studied the kidneys so you know that it regulates osmolality of the extracellular fluid osmolality 94% of the osmolality is contributed by sodium and associated anions therefore there is more thirst plus adh increase reabsorption of water by the 
kidneys. There is increased extracellular fluid volume and due to more thirst plus more ADH because ADH increases the reabsorption of water by the kidneys and that increases blood pressure. So now we have studied the role of the kidneys in the long-term regulation of blood pressure. We are going to study intermediate term mechanisms for the regulation of blood pressure. There are two, that is the myogenic mechanism and the capillary fluid shift mechanism. Myogenic mechanism, when blood pressure increases, blood flow increases and locally vessels constrict Blood flow increases, vessels constrict and return the blood flow and hence the blood pressure back towards normal. This is myogenic mechanism. This is an intermediate term mechanism operating over minutes. And the second is capillary fluid shift mechanism. When blood pressure increases, pressure, hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries increases. And according to Stalin's forces, there is more oozing of fluid from the capillaries and returns the blood pressure back towards normal locally within minutes. So the take home message is the kidneys are a dominant organ in the long term regulation of blood pressure. When blood pressure increases, the kidneys excrete more salt pressure naturesis and more water pressure diuresis and thereby return the blood pressure back towards normal. Increased salt in the body increases osmolality and that increases thirst and release of ADH, thereby increasing the extracellular fluid volume and increasing blood pressure. And intermediate terms mechanisms for the regulation of blood pressure are myogenic mechanisms. An autoregulatory mechanism that constricts blood vessels when blood pressure increases and returns fluid pressure back towards normal. And that is capillary fluid shift mechanism. That is, when there is more fluid in the capillaries, fluid leaks out, oozes out of the capillaries and returns the blood pressure back towards normal. So, this is our, the, my take-home message on long-term and intermediate-term regulation of blood pressure. Please remember that the kidneys are a dominant organ in the long-term regulation of blood pressure by these mechanisms, pressure, natriuresis, and diuresis. And for short-term, there is myogenic mechanism and capillary fluid shift mechanism. Thank you and have a good day.